What's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video guys and today I'm gonna be going over the top five tight ends and wide receivers in Madden 22 as well as a new revealed Superstar MVP 89 overall player. If you guys don't know what Superstar MVP is, it's usually one of the launch promos for Madden in general Ultimate Team. It's players that come with pre-built abilities onto them. That's why they're called Superstar players. Um, super cool. Let's get into the video though. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Can we get to 23k guys? We're a little under 300 away. Let's get there. Madden 22 does drop August 12th on EA Access, early access. So make sure you, we, let's just start growing, right? That's the point. Smash the like button. Can we get 20 likes in this video? Each and every like does help the channel grow. So if you guys watch every video, the best thing you can do to show support is comment down below and like the video. And of course, shout out to Garrett Lean again for being a part of the Poodle Squad, guys. Until people start doing it, same people can keep winning. So you have a high likelihood of winning, especially if I don't repeat. So comment down below and like the video and you will get a chance to be shouted out in the Poodle Squad. Now, questions. Do the pre-order curated legends Moss, Sanders, Walker, Harrison get power-ups? These items are standalone player items that do not have power-ups. However, they do have ability slots. So that's good because a lot of people were wondering, can I power them up? Will they go into like the later power-ups for Moss and Sanders, like their base legends? And they do not. They are standalone cards. They're one-offs, right? You use them, you abuse them, and then you just never use them again, right? It is what it is. Now, let's get into some of the wide receivers. But before, I forgot, we do have the early reveal of some of the other guys that people revealed on Twitter. So we got Josh Allen, 83 overall for the Bills. 77 speed, 89 throw power. High, high 70 stats for the most part besides the short accuracy and the throw on the run. Going to be a decent budget quarterback because the throw power Doug does get set feet lead and pass uh, lead elite. So that does mean that he's going to be one of the better, you know, velocity S quarterbacks to start the year. Could be interesting if you power him up and get him up to some of his thresholds with a elite passer and stuff. But again, he's okay. Alvin Kamara, as per usual, is a horrible card. Alvin Kamara has had has been one of the top four, you know, top four or five running backs in the NFL for the last like four or five years straight. Scored six touchdowns in one game. Elite in terms of fantasy, he's usually a top three guy. Like, and somehow he's not ever a top five running back in mud. And even worse, he's somehow incredibly slow. He's not fast enough to do anything. See, if you compare him to like the other running backs, Kamara, I mean, Kamara versus CMC, right? CMC is faster, better excel, better agility, better carrying, better catching, better change of direction, better break tackle. He beats him pretty much in everything by a large margin. It's not even comparable. This Kamara is trash. Uh, there's really no use for him. Again, I guess on a Saints theme team, he may have some use to start the year. But it's just, it's just, it's murder what they do to him because he's one of the, he's one of my favorite running backs in the NFL. If he had at least an 86 speed or an, if he had an 85 or 86 speed, I would easily probably pick him over everyone else. That's how much I like Kamara. But he does get a RB Apprentice, so if you take that with a grain of salt, if you do like RB Apprentice and you can't afford CMC, Kamara could be your guy. Devin White, middle linebacker, is actually faster than Kamara, which is just BS, complete BS. 85 speed, 85 excel, 75 strength, 82 tackle, 80 play rec. We got 76 block shit, 80 hit power, 70 zone. It still remains to be seen how useful linebackers will actually be this year, because last year they were completely just written off by the Muck community. If they're not useful, then disregard this card if they are. Gonna be one of the fastest linebackers day one with the power up, of course. 86 speed off the rip is gonna be pretty good, as well as good tackle, pretty good hit power. Block sheds decently up there, 76 for the beginning of the year. Gonna be an overall great middle linebacker with some height as well. Now we have Julio Jones, one of the newest wide receiver reveals. 84 speed, 87 jumping, 84 catching, 84 catch in traffic, 84 spec, 84 short, 83 medium, and 80 steep right running. Gonna be a modest route runner, modest catcher. He's gonna be at all. He's like Kamara. Super well-rounded, can do a little bit of everything, but I don't think he's going to be a usable wide receiver because simply because we have Jamar Chase, 91 speed, Tyreek Hill, 89 speed, Lance Allworth, 88 speed, Devonta Smith, 87 or 88 speed. It's just like right there, that's your top four wide receivers in the game. And then you got Devonte, who's literally the same speed as him, but just better route running and better catching. I don't think Julio's going to be a top wide receiver this year unless he gets some good like a uh, Super Saiyan MVP card, uh, you know, um, a kickoff card. Moving on, DeAndre Hopkins. Again, compare him to Julio. Both have 84 speed, but look at the catching differences. DeAndre is already like in the dark greens for that, and the spec, and the route running's better. He's just a, he's a better version of Julio. Slightly smaller though. I believe Julio is a physical archetype, which again, not, not exactly the greatest, but it is what he is. Considering his next gen stuff, he's supposed to be, these heights and stuff are supposed to make him better at catching certain things, so that could give Julio an edge. But 84 speed is just too low. DeAndre Hopkins will only make it work because of his catching, but still, I don't think Hopkins is all that great either. Tyree Kill, probably going to be... The second or even third best wide receiver to start the year, depending. And there's some, some players I don't even know about, which is weird because Tyreek's always the clear-cut number one. And I actually think his power might be overrated to start the year. It might end up being like 100K again. 
all for Jamar Chase and some other MVP card or a legend to come out and just completely overtake him. So, you know, be careful investing highly in Tyreek Hill off the rip. Again, he's still going to all year long, Tyreek Hill's going to have long term value. But I think off the rip, people might overrate his, you know, his price and stuff because it's Tyreek Hill. But if he is cheap, take advantage because eventually, you know, Jamar Chase isn't, that's not going to be a power upable card. You know, so Jamar Chase is pretty much done after that card. He has to start getting regular cards, which will be fast, of course. But I don't think he'll get as many upgrades as a Tyree Kill, unless he has some crazy rookie year. And same thing with like Lance Allworth. Like Tyree Kill is going to be the guy that gets those crazy speed upgrades all year. So don't don't discount him. But know that you could probably get a good value for him early in the year once people realize that there's other options. But he's pretty good with the, you know, powered up. He gets the 90 speed, 90 deep route running. Going to be a great card to start the year. Travis Kelsey, one of the tight ends in this top five here kind of trash i mean 81 speed short and medium are really good but 81 speed does not cut it at all i'd rather, i'd much rather take pits with an 88 it's just it's a no-brainer at, at all i mean that speed is just different for a tight end to start the year travis kelsey's way too slow and it's just it's a no-brainer to me uh medium and shorter good like i said catching's pretty good run blocks a little bit low doesn't even get that then we have Devonte adams who i actually think out of julio and hopkins of course is the best one because see with julio routes aren't crispy enough so he's going to be more of a go deep kind of receiver. And with that speed, he's really going to have to contest everyone. I don't feel like throwing up contested catches all game. Same thing with Hopkins. Devontae Adams actually could run crazy routes. And the beauty of Devontae Adams is he's not a go deep kind of guy in Madden. Like you can actually use him for the short and medium game, which is great because next gen is based off of better routes, better separation, you know, route running actually shown. Because in, in past Madden's guys, you could have 99 route running, but even 81 speed, you're going you're to make the crispest cut and they're going to just look at you and stay with you the whole time. This year, Good route runners, actually, like in real life, Devontae gets separation in his space off of his ability to separate from people, not because he's the fastest. And then once he captures the ball, he has space now because he's separated, right? So this Devontae Adams could actually be really good. Me and Zerk were talking about him. I think he has potential to be one of the best receivers off the rip, even with an 84 speed, which is crazy because of the fact that you could have him and Tyreek, right? Tyreek could run your post, your drags, and your slants, or post drags and streaks. And then Devontae could run your ins, your out routes. Your, you know, your post digs, your special routes, and do all the stuff that requires separation. He could probably get that done. Powered up and chemed up. He could end up with above 90 short and medium route running off of the rip. Could be crazy on the goal line and, you know, a, a power heavy situation where you're, they're, they're going to probably run commit or put Devontae one on one and just let him crisp some one up. So, moving on, guys, here are some of the budget guys for today. Now, just so you guys clarify, I know it probably sounded confusing. Top five tight ends and wide receivers were put together. So, Kelsey is apparently the only tight end that makes that list, right? So, that's pretty much what that means. Uh, there was four wide receivers and then the one tight end. We got Hollywood Brown real quick. Going to be a no money spent beast. 88 speed off the rip with 77 jumping. As per usual, Hollywood Brown, one of the best budget beast guys in Madden. Jalen Waddle, 88 speed, 82 jumping. Compare him to, real quick, to Marquise Brown. Similar in overalls. Catching wise, it looks like Waddle's better in traffic. Marquise is better in general. Route running, about the same. I mean, not going to be the biggest of differences, although Marquise will get all to 70s with certain chems, as well as a chance at maybe a high 70 deep route running. So Marquise is slightly better, in my opinion, although Waddle has the jumping. Then we have Anthony Schwartz for the Browns. 87 speed, but completely trash in terms of everything else. So Anthony Schwartz will be like the budgety, budgety option of the other two. But still really, really good regardless in terms of just straight speed. You could probably build a whole. You could build a budget squad receivers off Hollywood, Waddle, and Schwartz across. Then we got Noah Fan at tight end, 84 speed, 76 catching. Not a bad budget tight end, not a bad second tight end, right? He could just like, he could run that. You know, you know when you have two tight end sets and like you have your two receivers running their routes, your running back, your tight end running the routes. And there's like that second tight end that runs a complete a route that you never even look at. But when you do look at it, he's usually open because no one's looking at him. Noah Fan could run that route, right? Like that, that backside, the weak side um, in route or slant or something. Not a bad route to run with an 84 speed. Then we have base Kyle Pitts who has an 84 speed. Which again isn't bad again very similar cards here better route running on pits though and better spec so again really good budget tight ends again why would you go with kelsey in my opinion like why would you go with kelsey for 100k when you can get pits probably for like 10k maybe eight uh depending on how the year starts or fan and just rock with them who's gonna be faster and again tight ends in the early beginning like tight ends in the early of the year are wide open they go on the slow ass linebackers slow outside linebackers they get a lot of space all i gotta do is all i gotta do is you gotta just make the good read and get it to them and they probably have space already now later in the year like a month from now when coverage gets better and stuff yes you're getting the guy who can also catch so these guys won't be that much better than kelsey just based off speed but you get the point and we have regular kyle pitts right here which is going to be 88 speed 84 catching 83 catching traffic probably one of the best premieres you could take at least like i ranked them top three top two definitely take advantage of kyle pitts 
and then we have Terry McLaurin right here, which just to show you guys, which you guys should have seen already, 88 speed. Again, why I'm saying Tyreek will be good, but Terry powered up will be the same speed as Tyreek Hill. Oh, one speed less, sorry. One speed less, but he comes with probably a more well-rounded, oh, you know, build here. But still, not going to be better than Tyreek, but I, I'm saying like it's closer this year than it has been in years past. Usually it's Tyreek and then everyone else this year. It's like Tyreek and then everyone's wrapped around him. And for the new reveal, guys, we have Michael Thomas, similar to Devontae Adams, which is what I want to get to. He could be insane as well. My, like I said, if this works, he comes, he comes with route tech stock. If you can put an elite passer on him, right? Or elite or something, or not elite pass, sorry. Like a, a, one of the elites, but for catching, one of the uncommons. And you can get a short and medium up to 90. He could be like Devontae Adams off the rip as well, but slightly faster and better all around. Um, he could be really good. Like I said, I don't like their speeds at all. I think they're slow, but I said, I think because of next gen, we may actually end up appreciating more route running, more weight, more, more power this year than we have in years past. It's not going to be strictly off speed. Probably wrong, but we'll see. But yeah, if you can power him up and chem him up and everything, and get everything going well, and he can get above 90 medium and short, he could be a killer. You get him, Devontae, on both sides, you know, running their routes, and you get Tyreek in the slot or something. Could be super, super crazy. But guys, that is it for the reveals. That is everything. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn that noti bell. Give this video a big thumbs up, as always. If we can get 20 likes, guys, i greatly appreciate it. And of course, if you comment down below and like the video, I will give you guys a chance to be shouted out in the Poodle Squad every each and every video. So just keep it going. And until we keep, you know, until we keep getting more, I'll probably keep shouting out the same people. So keep it up. Thank you for watching. I'm out. Peace.